Hey, thanks for checking out this interview on Rift TV with Tobias Forge, the man behind Ghost. You can also hear this interview on my Talk and Rock with Meltdown podcast, which is where we post all these interviews in the audio form. In the meantime, let's join Tobias as he had his black screen up. We couldn't see him, but here's some cool pictures while you listen to Tobias talk about everything involved in the world around Ghost. Hey, Tobias, thanks so much for the time. How's things with you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. I've got, got a lot to get to here in just a short time, so let's uh, get right at it. First of all, I just want to talk about this uh, Metallica cover you did, uh, Enter Sandman, and um, talk about your thought process going into, I mean, uh, covering such an iconic song like that for this uh, box set. A lot of that thought process was a few years ago when we were asked to uh, participate in their... Um, you know, they were inducted into or inducted. They were given the Polar Music Prize. Um, and, um, you know, we were asked to uh, participate in that and to honor them at that uh, TV show, basically, the inauguration. Uh, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, there was a production team and they were like, yeah, we want you to open up the whole thing and we want you to play under Sandman. <laughs> okay. Uh and then, you know, I gave it a little thought. It was like, I can't really come up with anything else that would feel better because uh, most of the time when I choose to cover a band or an artist, it's usually because there is something to um, alter or change or um, in any way sort of refine. Uh, but with Metallica's music, uh, you know, as with a lot of heavy metal, it's it's very defined already. It's very thick with all the riffs are done and everything is sort of there. Uh, whereas, you know, as, as opposed to like a, a Bob Dylan song, that's just like an acoustic guitar and him sort of humming the vocals. It's very, you can interpret it in many ways. But then, you know, I, I came up with um, the idea to uh, sort of transform the chord progression underneath the melody and and it, it grew from there. And, and then a few years later, we were asked to do, um, you know, to be part of this, this record and it, it felt like uh, natural to to do Enter Sandman, basically, because we had already um, covered it. <laughs> so right, and to hear Enter Sandman with uh, with uh, some piano and stuff, and it was uh, was uh, pretty interesting. And just you know, that band, of course, they've been big supporters of you guys for a long time, and I know that you were a fan growing up. So did you feel a little bit of added pressure or no? Oh, of course. And in the time uh, originally, back when when we did the Polar Music Prize uh i of course felt a little put on the spot because of obviously them being such role models and and you know going from uh childhood idol idols you know on my wall and in my on my stereo to now uh you know comrades uh mentors supporters um that was early in the album cycle as well last time which also felt a little um, I'm always a little anxious when you start off an album cycle around when you're releasing an album and all that, because it's, there's so many other things to think about and so many other things to be wary and about and how things is, you know, it's going to come over, you know, come across. So uh, yeah, that was a nervous moment, <laughs> but it felt really good when, once we were going. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're nervous. And all of a sudden you got to throw a Metallica cover in there as well. So yeah, I, I get that. So uh, Hunter's moon is out right now. And uh, I've, I've heard that, you know, you had this idea for this song for a long time, obviously the perfect time to uh, release this song. So tell us about this, uh, this new track that's going to be used on the Halloween kills a movie. Uh, also a few years ago, it feels, it feels like that's going to be a repetitive <laughs> echo here just because of what, you know, the last year and a half, uh being sort of comatose um yeah a few years ago around the same time i uh it was, it was very simple really i i i um you know as i went went to dinner with a friend of mine his name is ryan turk who's work who works as a producer for uh halloween amongst other things and he was just like uh you know how, how would you like to 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 uh uh, to participate in maybe writing some music or maybe a song or something, uh, you know, kind of like uh, Alice Cooper, you know, with the man, man behind the mask. I was just, I would love to do that. I mean, that would be great. Of course. Yes. Uh, and uh, it just so happens that I actually have, I had a, had a, 
basically a, a, a grain of, of, of something that could become a song that, that was already in my mind called Hunter's Moon. And um, that was basically just a title. But when that opportunity came, it, it quickly sort of grew into an, like an, a formed idea. Um, and off it went. And then obviously we got a little bit delayed because of the film was done. Uh, my God, it's almost two years now, something like that. I'm so it's, I mean, that was supposed to premiere a year ago. So, but here we are. <laughs> and, and yeah, and everything got pushed back uh, due to COVID, I'm presuming. Is that what you're, is that what you're getting at? Yes. Yeah. So originally that song was going to sort of hit just in the middle of sort of not hi hiatus, but you know, at, you know, after the tour was over, it was going to come out in, 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 inside the void of, of sort of making a record. Um, and now it's uh, something different. <laughs> yeah, totally. So um, you're just talking about, you know, um, you know, that you, you, the rock, end of the record cycle and kind of moving forward and stuff. Well, now you got this tour that's going to be going on in 2022, starting out uh, the year with uh, Volbeat and stuff. So I've been asking artists this a lot. So it's like, how excited are you to get back on the road? Have, has this, as a pandemic pushed you back or was this about where you're going to go back on the road or, or, or what's the story with that? Yes and no. Originally, we were really lucky, if, if that is the right word. Uh, we, we just so happened that we, we were done touring in March uh, 2020. So we, we did the last show in, in LA, eh, not in LA, we did it in Mexico City. And then I had a brief little visit in LA, just some work stuff. And then I flew home. Um, and then everything just fucking went down the toilet. Um, <laughs> but for me, the reality in, in March 2020 was that I was going to go back to Stockholm. I was going to go basically immediately into the studio. Um, and we were going to have a record out about a year from then, um, which means that we would we aimed at March 2021. So it wasn't. You know, as the year progressed, 2020, we felt that everything is going to be pushed, but we weren't we weren't canceling anything. We were just pushing and, and sort of changing as we went. And now as we were closing in on, I don't want to say the world changing back or coming back because we're not really there yet. But it was once we noticed that now it's, it's the, you know, they the haze is sort of clearing a little it felt like a good time to uh to start uh announcing things and and you know because also, also you know halloween film was gonna you know halloween kills was gonna come anyway so it felt uh, natural and now it's just like knock wood hopefully everything goes as planned now your guys stage uh, show and your production and stuff is so is so big and stuff you you must have tons of ideas rattling around for this upcoming tour right absolutely <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know wait. what to say more than that. Yes, of course we're <laughs> we're you know we're gonna do more and and better uh, than we've had have done before. That's the plan. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen you here in Detroit. I think it was two thousand seventeen, if I'm not mistaken, maybe eighteen. But man, what a great show! I mean, just so good. And uh, Cardinal Copia, I, I hear it's gonna be Papa Emeritus the fourth. Now, is that right? Yes, I mean he transformed already in in Mexico City. Got you. In okay. 2020. Gotcha. All right. So, but he's, he's waiting patiently and, you know, waiting for his, uh, for his moment. Yeah. And that moment's going to be coming here uh, pretty quick at the uh, start of 2022. You know, I lived this uh, crazy life and I was just talking to Alyssa about this, but yesterday I just happened to find myself hanging out with M shadows from event sevenfold for a couple hours in, All right. uh, in Nashville. Yeah. And I told him I was gonna be talking to you. And I said, what would you ask uh, Tobias forge uh, the man behind ghost? And he said, he said, first of all, he's a huge fan. And he said he really is curious to know about your writing process. And you've probably talked about this before, but what is the writing process that you guys go through? I usually write bits and pieces and snippets. And and um, for some time, I mean, it varies a little. Nowadays, because we spend so much time on tour, I like to, um, when there's time off, I, uh, what I usually do is I, uh, get together with friends of mine 
it's usually different ones. Um, basically other songwriters, because I like, I like going into env an environment and situation where I, where I need to, I guess the word is impress. You know, I, I want to come in and just like, here's a song idea I have. And this is another song, but you know, would you like to work on one of these? Like, which one do you feel most excited about? Which one moves you the most? And uh, more than often, that person says, yeah, I, I like that one. That sounds really cool. I think that could be, a, you know, this or that. And then, you know, you just start sort of putting it together, make a demo. And, and uh, throughout the last at least five years, um, or from Meliora, what was that then six, seven years, something like that. Yeah. Uh, that has been sort of the process uh, where basically you make a little, an embryo, but then you sort of realize it with someone. And uh, the way I do it with various people that aren't, you know, necessarily, uh, they are in other bands, I guess, or other, they have other projects and stuff. Uh, but that way you always... You don't have, you know, it's not on your plate to make a record together. It's your, on your plate to make the best out of this song. So you always get the best out of people, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, it feels super excited. And if I do that during an album cycle, when people don't expect me to do anything, uh, I just feel so much better about it. that. That's how a lot of the, the tracks on our last three albums have come you know come out yeah you know i just stay somewhere and and write a song with someone and you know I, I know you know then you carry that with you for a year not showing it to anyone except for you you know my wife and my kids and you know yeah the best friend or something but you you sit on it that was the same thing with hunter's moon obviously we knew that it was going to transform into something but that that was also not peddled around a whole lot before um right. so at which i like that process that's it's fun because it's nowadays you know you don't really most bands don't what what we used to do or i mean i and everybody else that was in bands what you used to do back in the day was you know you wrote the song at home and then you came into a room with all live gear that was really loud and then you had to teach everyone how to play the track and you were always up against their, uh, uh, you know, their temperament and their uh, attention span. Um, so you had to be very, very, very meticulous and like, this is how the bass line goes. And this is how the guitar plays. And no, 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 don't play that. And please, drummer, please stop fucking playing. <laughs> uh, and then by the time, you know, at the end of the night, you're so deaf because of, <laughs> you know, that the just exhaustion of, 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 of sort of teaching a group of people a song whereas nowadays you know you go into a studio where you have a like a recording setup and you know usually the first time you hear the song it sounds pretty fucking full or sorry oh, pretty effing yeah you're fine you're fine it sounds pretty effing rad <laughs> well i'm gonna pass that along to shadows and uh, i appreciate your time and uh uh, just uh, my, my final name drop here, uh, my friend Nick Lindstrom, the greatest hockey player to ever come out of your uh, home country there, mm -hmm. he told me to say Elskar Dit Band. Oh, say Taksumike. Taksumike, okay. <laughs> and, and that means thank you, I suppose? Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> Hey, Tobias, congratulations on your success. I love the band. Can't wait for new stuff. And, of course, this uh, tour next year sounds like it's going to be awesome. The Hunter's Moon is just killer. And uh, we really appreciate you talking to us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.